Hey traders, this is my weekend video. Uh, thanks for tuning in here real quick. So uh, basically please like the video below here on the YouTube tube channel. And below that in the comments section I will have a link to my Discord. It's free if anybody's interested. And my Discord focuses on trying to uh, post the best charts for the best stocks in the stock market every, every day, every week. And I uh, try to give you the best setups for day trading purposes. Okay. Uh, I am a day trader, 100% day trader, and that's what I focus on, so I, I have four lists that I stick with. So basically getting into this real, right, real quick here, this is the view if you go into my live session every day, which is part of the service. Uh, it's all free. Um, uh, it gives you an idea. I had this screen up all day long during my trading, and I actually talk about the uh, stocks that I'm entering, or uh, options I'm entering, and what I'm exiting, and stuff like that live. And we have a lot of other people who participate and mods also. Uh, so basically, uh, this is your primary screen. Now, if you zoom in here real quick, I'll show you some things I'm looking at real quick here. Uh, we're going into next week. So I was coming into Friday thinking that we could have a uh, with a bearish bias, bias, bias basically. So Wednesday, what we have, uh, if anybody follows vault volume profile theory, this is a completed bell curve up here at the top. Found heavy resistance. To the upside with single prints. See how how the volume profile just goes to virtually nothing at the very top there. So we had single prints up there. So basically heavy resistance above us here on the spy. Okay, that's what you're looking for a top a, a potential topping formation in any type of upside pattern. Okay, and as you can see there, here, you know, even here, we did not have that topping formation, which we currently now do have in place. So I'm going in person next week, still looking more towards the bearish side. Uh, the primary trend, though, even if we open flat, we'll come in there the night, Monday morning. We're going to still be inside of our primary trend channel. So you can't get too bearish, you know. You just, you know, can't get too bearish yet. But, you know, once we start breaking that trend, bottom, the date start breaking Friday's lows. Once we start breaking Friday's lows. You know, that should be a very good indication to start to get some day, day trades to the short side. So uh, just keep that one in the back of your mind if that does happen to set up for next week. Okay. But ultimately, it does look like we have to start thinking towards the bearish side going into next week. Now, uh, you go over to Q's, it's even look a little bit more bearish here. Okay. And the main reason being is we came down where we closed. I always get where would price the algos are always trying to close price in a very bullish trend to where they don't have to push the markets to the upside they can open flat to and still maintain the primary trend okay so basically we're looking at 9 30 uh monday morning guess what we, we technically would be outside of the uptrend if we were to open flat monday morning so that's a more bearish case going into the next thing also, this is a very, see, see how that, that rejection was a very significant rejection on the queues. Uh, outside of range, I was loading Wednesday. I was loading a boat short up here. Uh, and I had a really nice uh, short trade to happen there Wednesday. And uh, so, but I, did, I never dreamt that it would be that, that, that dramatic of a sell-off. But that, that is a really critical textbook uh, potential uh, topping pattern. And it's, it's not quite as clear on this one, even down here. It got pretty narrow, you know, for that bounce. So, you know, uh, it wasn't quite as clear that we were going to finally top out here. But it does look like there's a very good chance. Uh, we have a bunch of single prints up here acting as resistance. And we also, Monday, had a large dark pools. Uh, a large dark pool come in. So that means somebody, they were trading behind the scenes. That traders were trading behind the scenes uh, shares. And uh, it wasn't actually being registered on the, on the stock exchanges. And my main takeaway is that, you know, here we are Wednesday. We tried to hold above it. We broke down Wednesday into the close. We come in Friday. We couldn't even get back above those large dark pool trades that happened. And guess what? We fell even further. So this is acting a lot more bearish to me going into next week. Okay. Uh, if you go back on the bigger time frame here, this down here. I'm really very concerned the volatility is not pricing in the risk. 
the risk that the, the of our employee profiles and our SPs are suggesting here. So it does look like another sign that this could be a capitulation. This is a major breakdown here in the VX. Uh, uh, you know, if you if you look at the VIX itself, VIX, that this is a very critical breakdown here. We have broken down very critical support here on the VX futures. Could very easily be a, a just a, 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 because of the holiday, uh, 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 the extremely light volume on the holidays. This could be manipulated too much to the wrong side. So be very mindful of that. So I'm looking for initially right out of the gate Monday morning to start seeing a bit in volatility. So let's see if that does, does transform. TLT uh, did not uh, confirm. Uh, it was not breaking to the upside, confirming the bullish posture, and that the, the, uh, the VIX was actually given us here. It was actually uh, holding out near the lowest in the session. Okay, so that's another thing. And we have PCE can emerge coming out this week, which they should be bullish. PCE should be bullish given how much how the commodity prices are coming down uh, globally. They are price starting to price in uh, recessionary pressures across the global markets. Um, and that's that's what the Fed needs. I mean, to get the uh, inflation in check, in check is some inflation, infl uh, deflationary uh, pressures in in the global economy. And uh, so basically, this is not it, it, now. So this is acting contrary to what we hear. This is actually acting more. This what's happening in the TLT is saying a more risk on scenario uh, or a risk off scenario in the global markets. So keep that in the back of your mind. Going forward here. So real quick here, uh, this is a really good close look at my uh, Discord site, how I've got it set up here. And so you got your general chat uh, alerts. Uh, sometimes members or myself will put uh, what trades we're getting into and getting out of. We'll give live uh, live alerts in text. Most of my alerts are actually given out verbally. If I'm a day trader, it's very difficult for me to actually put physical written alerts down in a timely manner uh, but i will uh, pre-market and stuff uh, like member trade ideas and stuff i'll, I'll give an idea of what i'm looking at like uh, uh just like uh uh see here did i post on friday no i didn't post on friday uh but uh a lot of times what i will have is uh i'll post some best ideas i'm looking at and i was actually looking at meta i was looking at google uh, google right out of the gate i went market short google Friday had a really good win on that one there uh, and see I've got these already anal analyzed right here and so let's look like I'm gonna go through and start top bottom real quick like Nvidia right here real quick here uh, you know this one here is acting the the, uh, the weakest uh, the magnificent seven okay and uh, so you know we have to start thinking just thinking it's kind of much deeper here our primary trend line is down here so I would be looking for that our next test down here primary trend line uh, that would put us down into the uh, 435 range and uh, we definitely got to keep that uh, as a contender going forward here so we have lost the uh, since the uh, CPI gap uh, on the broader markets that happened uh, just this past month a couple weeks ago uh, you know most things are holding their, above their anchored VWAP since that CPI gap you no know, so, you know, since the earnings, NVIDIA has not done that. And NVIDIA is fading uh, off that uh, CPI gap. So be very mindful of that. So this one's acting, acting fairly weak here. Okay. And then I put some notes and stuff as I go here, too. Uh, then the momentum is just not uh, hanging up there. And if anybody, if I find some other charts, uh, you know, posted other places, that's what I actually add to. So if I find other charts that are really standing out, that's what I do here uh, in my uh, room here real quick. Like this one here, I didn't even notice this. We put in a grave, gravestone doji uh, Friday. Uh, it, it's an initial sign of a potential reversal signal. We've already put one before, had a nice drill reset. Now we got another one, possible national re reset on Apple, which I actually missed that one, you know. I did notice, you know, I noticed it here, but I didn't notice the uh, terminology for that. Uh, and I do have it, you know, we just finished feeling two major gaps here on Apple. So, yeah, we definitely could come back down here on that one. So, be mindful of that. Microsoft, I've been uh, bearish on Microsoft for a while now, and I found this here uh, on one of my sites real quick. 
and was talking about how we're having uh, negative pressure imbalances. Uh, 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 large investors are putting on uh, protection for Microsoft. So be mindful of that, uh, you know, uh, and it's into a major resistance zone. So be very mindful of that going forward here. Uh, Google was one that I traded Friday. I can't remember the chart, I put that chart on here or not. The reason I took that Google trade was, if I find it real quick here. Well, at any rate, so basically, in this uh, this chart here is actually given different levels. We're rejecting, we're rejecting pretty hard there. Should be coming down to support next here on Google. Uh, Google down here, your main supports down here around the uh, uh, 133 area. And then I also got this one here on the uh, uh, major uh, uh, sell side of protection uh, happening from institutions. Professionals, traders are putting on protection for Google. So keep that one also on watch. Amazon, on the opposite side, institutions are buying, uh, they're going the long side on Amazon into, uh, and I have to agree with that. You know, it sounds like retail sales are turning out really good. Uh, this thing here has potential all the way up to, uh, uh, we're targeting $200 a share if this thing finally breaks out of this inverted head and shoulders here on, the, uh, on Amazon. So you have to be very mindful of this. It's not one of the charts that I would be looking to short. Okay. Um, Meta, another one, just like Google, institutions are putting on, they're putting on more protection on Meta than they are actually Google. So be very mindful of that uh, going forward here. Okay, and uh, just keep an eye on that. Uh, Netflix, uh, looking really, Strong here. Uh, basically, we're not getting any multi-day sell signal yet here on Meta. There is a gap above us right here, so or, or Netflix. So uh, I'm looking this week. Very likely that we'll fight for this gap on Netflix. So uh, that this doesn't make uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they're going to bring it back down until that gap fill. But we don't even have a multi-day sell signal yet here on Netflix. So trend your friend, you must stay on it alongside your trend. Another one, Boeing here, very strong pattern. We just on their moxie. We just turned to the bullish side here on our moxie on um, uh, Boeing. This thing here might still have some legs left in it. It's not something that I necessarily want to be shorting at this point in time. So uh, definitely keep this one on watch for, for potential more bullish action instead of trying to fade this pop. So uh, you know, that's just a you know, basically we get up here, so that puts you up, what, what price chart is that putting you at up here, 230, you know, we're 220 right now, you know, that's $10 higher, I mean, <laughs> Boeing does that in one day, so, you know, you know, definitely, you know, something that I'd be looking at going forward into this week, okay, uh, AMD is another one, you know, I found, you know, I found a nice little trend line, I went short AMD, but I got, it, 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 it's kind of shook me out of it. I ended up taking a loss on it. Could have had a really nice win on AMD Friday, but I had a tight stop, and I ended up stopping out the absolute worst at the worst time. Uh, and it, it, it decided to finally start paying right after I got taken out of it, of course. Uh, but you know that happens to everybody. You know Netflix or AMD. I, I'd be going into next week, you know, going into the Monday, thinking, hey AMD, I want to be looking for the short side. Just off this one chart here, you know, uh, the moxie on sort of time frames here. Uh, you know, we're starting to get. Uh, I was coming into Friday. I was looking bearish on the uh, AMD because the moxie was actually turning to the bearish side. Give me a bearish signal going right into the open, and when you know it, uh, it just kind of went sideways there, and it's chopped me to crap, chop, chop, chop me to pieces on that AMD trade. Kind of sucked. So, uh, and Tesla. So, uh, you know, really important here. I was going into Friday, and we were getting a bullish signal on the uh, Tesla. The Moxie was giving us a bullish signal, you know, a buy signal coming into uh, Friday. Uh, we held resistance so far here on Tesla. Well, our short-term signal was looking to be bullish for Friday, which turned out to be, it turned out to be the, the best of the Megatech Friday. You know, a nice little... Uh, short squeeze to the upside there. Still got a lot of resistance ahead. 
we haven't broken out of major movements. Something, you know, it's nice to know how these short term indicators, you know. But if you look down here on your bigger time frame here, obviously we got a downward turn line, you know, markets hold in here for another few days here. Test is probably going to be coming up and test the trend line once again. So I definitely want to keep that one on watch. I want to lean towards the bullish side on Tesla uh, until it tells me otherwise. Okay. So I'll just give you a quick, quick rundown of what I go through every week and how I analyze stocks. And, uh, you know, uh, I come into Monday morning. We'll see where indices are Monday morning. But like I said, the main indices, in my opinion, uh, we, come in, we should be coming into Monday morning with a, 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 slight, a, a greater short bias. But then again, you have uh, uh, Cyber Monday, Cyber Monday, Friday, or Monday. So we'll see what happens, uh, see what happens. If we start having really good reports and great sales and all that stuff, Amazon could be breaking out, and Amazon could be taking everything up with it. So you have to be quite mindful of that scenario in uh, this week's uh, uh, price action. So there you go. I gave you a quick rundown. Appreciate it. Like I said, like everything, and uh, please retweet me on Twitter because I'm going to post this on well uh, X, I guess you call it. But thanks a lot.